During the Oprah interview with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, a ton of royalty was spilled just all over the place. From conversations surrounding the potential skin color of their child, to royal customs that Meghan said she was ignorant to, this interview was certainly one for the books. However, now a claim made by Meghan and Harry has been called into question, and even they admit that they lied about it. But first, for more royal family news, make sure you check out that brand new playlist. With that out of the way, let's smash that like button and just dive right in. According to a report from the Daily Beast, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's confession about having a secret wedding actually never happened. A spokesperson for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex told the press that the couple did exchange personal vows, but they went on to say that this private event was in no way a legal or official service. However, during that interview with Oprah, Meghan and Harry implied that this private wedding that took place in a garden at Kensington Palace was in fact their legal wedding, even adding that it was presided over by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welbley. The reason why this detail was scandalous to some was that their actual wedding was this massive event that cost British taxpayers money. So to say that they had two weddings really angered those who already didn't like Meghan Markle. During the interview, Meghan said, three days before our wedding, we got married. No one knows that. The vows that we have framed in our room are just the two of us in our backyard with the Archbishop of Canterbury. However, now these statements that came from Meghan are now being used as a point of attack for critics of hers, many of which are desperately trying to invalidate everything else that was said about the royal family, really anything that they deem to be inflammatory or harmful to the monarchy. Following that interview, the attack campaign to discredit began. Officials with the Church of England even casted doubt on the claims of a backyard wedding. According to them, church law says that a wedding isn't legal unless it is witnessed by two people or takes place in a certified place of worship. Worship. The Archbishop's office would later tell priest Mark Edwards, Justin does not do private weddings. Meghan is an American, she does not understand. Adding, Justin had a private conversation with the couple in the garden about the wedding, but I can assure you, no wedding took place until the televised national event. Although Harry and Meghan's defenders are saying that Meghan was simply trying to make a point that their exchange of private vows in the garden was just a way of making things more meaningful and personal. She did specifically say to Oprah that it was between us, so that it wasn't part of the spectacle for the world to see. Unfortunately though, logic and reason is something critics do not bode well. Well with. Once a critic of someone has some ammo like this, they will use it to call into question everything else that was said, regardless of a lack of evidence to support their claims, or rather the fallacy that's being called out. But having no evidence to back your own claim is a bit of a fallacy in and of itself. However, this speculation that the private wedding was not official comes after a UK news outlet The Sun obtained a copy of the couple's wedding certificate. Don't know how they swung that, but okay. For which in their opinion proved that Meghan and Harry did not wed three days before their $50 million wedding. Which is the real crux of why people are so upset right now. I, I know I mentioned it earlier, but imagine taxpayers dropping money on a wedding and then you get told that there was another secret wedding just days before. Most people's poor logic would then assume that the taxpayers must have also paid for that one as well. And therefore, Meghan and Harry are just being ungrateful royals. There's a lot of hoops to jump through to arrive at this sort of thinking, but I understand where the outrage could have stemmed from. Hence this incessant desire to pick through every last detail, searching for something that could even be considered as a lie. You see what they're doing here though, right? They find one occasion where the details are scanty and boom, they will hold that as their bedrock for the idea that Meghan Markle is a liar. It's really messed up, especially considering the gravity of everything else that was said in that interview. Whatever happened to us growing into a society and culture that wanted to protect women? Now we have a woman who is literally asking for help and kindness, but critics are too busy being fanboys of the royal family that they can't see a human being who's being hurt right now. Meghan actually said that the family was indifferent to her mental health. Even after expressing that she felt like taking her own life most days, no one offered help, and even worse, they made her go out on these royal engagements and smile as if nothing was wrong. Well, guess what? Something is wrong and this antiquated monarchy needs to catch up to 2021 or else they will fall. But I'd love to hear your comments on this story though, so make sure you leave it down below. And if you're getting upset that I'm expressing my opinion, then that's just too bad. This is an entertainment news YouTube channel. I'm a YouTuber, not a journalist. If you want straight facts, no emotion, no opinion, then go read a newspaper. With that though, let's check out some of your comments from the video titled, David Dobrik released his second apology after this. Audios AF says, the fact that he's referred to as Dirty Dom is already a red flag. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have taken that as a nickname. Probably not a good idea. It's like Chris D'Elia naming his fan the babies. That's a terrible idea. Did not age well. David Benner says he should have made an apology video two years ago when he took down the video and started distancing himself from Dom. Not when all of the sponsors dumped him. Yeah, it does make it look a little... Eh, you know, suspicious when he starts doing it now after he's losing all of his money. I mean, I get it, but you're right. Should have happened way sooner. Riley the Potato says, there's so many issues with David, always been uncomfortable by him and people in his team. Well, I mean, it looks like he won't be around for much longer, so. Matt X has says, if he wasn't called out and backed into a corner, he wouldn't be apologizing again. You are 100% right. Black Power says, in my opinion, I understand why he turned the comments off. The internet can be brutal. The internet certainly can be brutal, but the other half of it is we need people to be held accountable. And without that comment, 
comment section and a dialogue going back and forth between people just on the outside of the conversation, it would just feel like we're missing something, you know? You can't get rid of the comment section. As much as you guys like to comment, you know, Johnny, stop wearing that too. That style's never coming in. <laughs> it's fine. I want you to be able to comment both good things and bad things. But for now, that has been today's video. I've been your host, Johnny Rogers, and until next time, stay classy, YouTube.